I'm Joey. I'm Jason. And this is Metal Monster Review. Review. Today we're going to talk about a movie from 1966. And we're going, going back to Toho here. It's time to get back to some old school monster movies. Today we're going to discuss the 1966 version of War of the Gargantuans. This is a cool little monster flick. Uh, I think it's got a little more to offer here than what people are giving it credit for because Toho is just so known for Godzilla and Rodan and Mothra, which are all really fucking killer characters here and just cool monster movies. And then you get something like this, which does bring something really new and fresh to the table. Jason, would you like to talk a little bit about this? Yeah, War of the Gargantua was... It... This movie, it don't fuck around. Beginning of the movie, you get straight kaiju monster action. Yeah, right, yeah. right into it. That giant squid attacking the boat. And you think the deadliest catch people had a dangerous job. Japanese fishermen have a fucking dangerous job. Everybody has a life insurance policy here. At least you'd have to have one in that line of work. Yeah, the movie, this movie starts out, it has this Japanese fishing ship or... I don't know if it's fishing, but it is a boat in the ocean. And it gets attacked by this giant octopus. And the poor guy is screaming for help. Then all of a sudden, the octopus just lets go. And the guy looks out the window, and there's a big green monster fighting the octopus. Yeah, and he doesn't even seem, like, <laughs> bothered by it. Maybe because they're used to seeing this, because it's like... Uh, well, it's not Rodan, it's not Mothra, it's not Godzilla. Who the hell is this guy? New guy. New guy in town, but... And you might might think first off, oh, the, the monster's saving these people. Nope. As soon as he gets rid of that octopus, he goes straight for the boat, destroys it. And then he, uh, I think it was the guy that got attacked by the octopus. He's the only survivor. And then there are... Ask him what happened, and he's saying he got attacked by a, a monster. And it, it, it just cracks me up because they're like, What? No, no, that didn't happen. Yeah, like, ah, <laughs> oh, buddy, you're fucking drunk. <laughs> There's no monster here. But I love how you mentioned with that opening scene because that is a pretty cool fight, and I really dug that. Yeah, because most of these old Japanese monster movies, it, it takes a little while to get to some monster action, but this one, man. Right off the bat. I boom, agree. And, boom. That, and that's cool because that just brings it right in focus right away. No pissing around. Hey, you know, within the first couple minutes, you got a pretty cool fight going on right there. Well, then he, he tells the, the Coast Guard that it was attacked by a monster. They don't believe him. And they send divers out and they see the, sh like, the ship's not destroyed. It didn't hit nothing. It's just sunk. Then the monster attacks another fishing boat. I thought it was cool that people look down and see, this big yeah, see him looking, looking up looking at up. you. You know what I mean? Then, then these fishermen end up netting it and like pulling it. It comes out of the water and terrifies them. That was pretty. And cool. they're all working in unison here. It's like, all right, everybody on three, heave. They're all pulling. Oh, all pulling. And then all of a sudden, they they feel like this giant tug, and all of a sudden, this monster appears out of the water and is ripping their fishing net apart, and they all start to run like hell the other direction, because here we go, a good old-fashioned invasion in your town, you know <laughs> what I mean? And that's the cool thing about monster movies, because like I've mentioned earlier with previous reviews when we discussed uh, Godzilla vs. Mothra, uh, it was filmed from low angles and make the monster look a lot bigger because it was just a guy in a suit. And you had a really fun fact for me earlier today about the guy playing the green monster. Oh, yeah. I'm not even going to try to pronounce his real name, but the, the guy, the suit actor in the green monster was actually the actor that played Godzilla in probably half the Godzilla movies from the... Like, I know he played Godzilla 19, the first Godzilla, Godzilla Reigns Again... And I like that because I never knew that. And I thought that was a pretty cool did bit piece of trivia there. To, yeah, that was cool. I know, he, was all, he was all happy in this movie because when he played Godzilla, he's in a 
couple hundred pound suit. And his head is actually like in the neck area, so yeah. you can't see where the hell he's going. This one here, you could tell, you know, you could see his eyes. He's just got a lot of heavy makeup and different, you know, uh, the ensemble on himself, but he's at least able to see where he's going, which makes it for like a real beneficial thing for him there. Compared to, as we've mentioned in previous Godzilla reviews, you know, his head's in the neck. He's bumping into everything because he can't see where in the hell he's going. So I thought that was kind of a really cool piece of trivia here. Then they end up contacting this scientist because five years ago he had a gargantua and it escaped. But that's the other thing that makes me scratch my head when this fisherman's saying he was attacked by a monster. Oh, you're crazy. But they call a scientist. Oh, could this be your monster you had? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, well, oh, you're goddamn drunk. Yeah, you don't know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, it could have been. I forgot to mention to you, you know, we had another monster <laughs> My fault. You know. When he tells him it couldn't be my monster, my our gargantuan. I left friendly. my monster at home. What the hell are you talking about? You know. <laughs> he said his escape that it's probably dead. But then someone finds footprints up in the... Japanese Alps, and they think it might be their gargantua they had. But then the, the second boat this monster attacked, they found some sort of fur or cells on it. So they, they send that scientist sends his buddy to go investigate that while they go to the Alps to inve investigate these footprints. Then the, the giant monster finally attacks an airport, so everybody sees it now. Now everybody. Everybody knows no one's bullshit. Yeah. So it just kind of brought them right out to the open. And what this leads up to is a really cool song. Oh. By a lounge singer. Amazing. Yeah, and once you see the movie, you'll understand that the words just keep getting stuck in her throat. I'll repeat that because that sounds vaguely important. <laughs> the words just keep getting stuck in her throat. And what I notice here about this green monster is that he'll actually, like, he'll pick up somebody. He'll just throw them into his mouth, which I thought was pretty cool, you know what I mean, considering the time. He chews them up, but he always spits out the clothes. Like, you know, oh, too many carbohydrates <laughs> here. We got to, you know, whatever, we're counting carbs here or something like that. He'll spit them out. You don't like Levi's. <laughs> you know, picking Wranglers out of his teeth, you know what I'm saying? But it leads into here, as we're going to skip ahead a little bit here with that, being that we mentioned the green monster, we end up stumbling into another monster who is kind of related to him but inadvertently and they were considering well this is a an offshoot of an, a different monster who is referred to as like the brown monster they actually have names but yeah. i can't recall them without lying to you yeah. and they end up this one's actually here for some better benefit he doesn't like his brother or you know half brother however you want to look at it and say him eating people that bothers him to no end it just pisses him off to no end so he ends up seeing that he ended up eating some people he found a, a sprawl of all these different clothes and they get into a really cool monster fight when his brother's sitting there, he grabs that tree, pulls it out of the by the roots, and right out of the ground, and just starts wailing on him with a tree. And I thought, wow, here we go. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you mentioned about how they started fighting. When, when, the, when these two bastards fight, man, you get not like no two minute fight scene. I'm talking 10 minutes. I think the final fight's like almost 20 minutes long. Yeah, this is for a good portion of the last half of the movie, I guess I should say watching them fight and it's really entertaining and of course you know being that this is a toho film we have to utilize the military uh trying to electrocute him uh hitting him with you know bullets planes everything under the sun but they did come up with a new way of destroying these monsters and i don't want to give I don't want to give it away. I'd rather you see it for yourself here. But I thought that was totally cool watching that because that was something really new and inventive and fresh to bring to a series. Uh, what, what's different about this movie is when they were when they're doing what he's talking about to setting shit up, it actually damages this monster. You see wounds and stuff on it. Like all these other monster movies, they shoot rockets, it blows up, there's, there's no effects done to them. And I like that, because you're seeing where the the uh, injuries are actually occurring, and I did like that. And Toho, was, they were on their A game with the miniatures in this movie, man. All the way the buildings cr cr crumbled, 
they just didn't fall over when the monsters hit them. They like crumble like a real building would do. I think all the, it was all top notch, all the little miniature work done in here. I like that. I tell you what, this was an entertaining monster movie for sure. Yeah, when you, when you see things Japanese monsters, everybody, like you mentioned, Godzilla, Mothra, even Gamera. Yes, no one I ever hear, no one ever talk about. Or the gargantuas. Yeah, you don't hear that much. You know what I mean. Uh, that's, it's part. It's part, of, it's part of my part. One of my favorite Toho movies, besides Godzilla. It's just entertaining the whole way through. It's non, non-stop almost. It is. It's really an entertaining monster movie, and I would say hey, for sure, check it out. This in this movie, I've seen this the first time I seen it was back when I was a kid on TNT Monster Vision. Oh, I miss Monster Vision. <laughs> I tell you what, man, I mean, this isn't no full-blown horror movie by no means, but when you're a young kid, especially when the fisherman's telling him what happened to his other crew on the boat, you see the people swimming away from the boat, and you see the monster right behind him coming after him. You see that big hand poof, flop on him. I, it gave me fucking nightmares when I was a kid, man. And so you said you saw this on uh, Monster Vision. Was this the uh, Joe Bob Briggs era Monster yeah. Vision, or is this pre-Joe Bob? It was Joe Bob. And I tell you what, I, I I remember watching Monster Vision as a kid, and I loved it, man. I mean, I did get to see some early Godzilla movies, you know, and uh, I remember watching Return of the Living Dead on uh, Monster Vision. And I remember the Dust of Dawn Friday the 13th marathon that he did, that all-night event, showing several Friday the 13th films. So I'm glad that, you know, you got to get exposed to these things like that. So Yeah. And this film's definitely worth your... If you're a fan of Japanese monster movies, I know it's a special taste. Not lots of people like them, but I love them. And if you're a fan of them, man, you've never seen this, definitely check it out. You can get it dirt cheap. I bought mine in a... A combo pack. It came with Rodan and War of the Gargantuas yeah. for like five bucks. And it's on Tubi. Yeah, you, it's on. Yeah, I already watched it on Tubi. But the thing I, thing I complain about Tubi is their dub version is completely different than the DVD I had. So the streaming version is different than the DVD version here. Like the the dub, the, the translation is all different. I know this movie's it's loosely supposed to be a loosely based sequel to Frankenstein Conquers the World. But on the DVD I have, they, they, they never call these monsters Frankenstein. They, it's gargantuous. But on the Tubi version, that's all they call them is Frankenstein. As I was watching it on Tubi, I'm like, what's going on in this movie? What the <laughs> fuck? Oh. But either way, it's it's worth to watch on Tubi. If you've never seen it, watch it on Tubi. For sure. I'm Joey. I'm Jason. And this is Metal Monster Review. Review.